G'day, people. I'm back. <clears throat> I've been on the internet a little bit. Somebody sent me a link to uh, some information on YouTube or uh, some people are offering with respect to security, so on and so forth. And uh, you know, I had a chance to look at those videos, and I got to tell you, it's uh, <laughs> a whole ton of misguided information there. Uh, clearly, a lack of understanding of what's going on with, with respect to securities. And, um, you know, I've, I've stated here that one thing we don't do is we don't provide forms for people and say, here, do this and do that. And then when you, after you've done that and do that, let us know and we'll tell you what to do next, which is what these people are doing. And, you know, it's fine and dandy to say, well, when you do this, the judge is going to say this, the judge is going to say that. <laughs> Nobody knows what the judge is going to say. And what if he doesn't say exactly what, what you know, their teacher said the judge is going to say? He comes back with some different response and it just throws everything off whack and all I anyhow, I've been on this path for 20 years. What I see happening here is people lacking understanding or relying on others to tell them what to do and how to do it, what's going to transpire, which is all fiction. <laughs> Nobody knows what's going to, what judge is going to say or anyone's going to say for that matter. <clears throat> people are going to dig themselves a deeper hole. I've seen it happen many, many times. I've done it to myself <laughs> and rather than paying a $200 fine, um, and get get educated, you know, take doing these things and just digging a, a much deeper hole, losing property, losing income, losing money, losing family, losing children. <clears throat> That's why here we provide information for people to get educated so you can stand on your own. So when you're talking to someone and they come back at you with something expected or unexpected, you know how to deal with it, how to address it. And if you're if you're getting guidance from other people saying things like, well, when the judge says this, you say that. Well, what if the judge doesn't say this? <laughs> Nobody knows what's going to happen there. It's ridiculous. So we don't, that's why I say we don't do that here and hope people catch on to that and take the time to get educated, self-educated. You know, that's not the subject of um, the primary subject or a reason why I'm here today to do this uh, short video. Um, provides, more, provides more information for uh, your edification and uh, maybe help you connect some dots. Again, uh, this is all to do with trust, estates, and securities. And today we're going to talk about identity of the parties toward correction toward correction of status. And just again, for the record, government and other ent entities, so your banks and your major corporations, they are securities intermediaries. That's what they do. They buy and sell securities. That is the world they are in. Everything else is a dog and pony show to distract us again. Understanding trusts, estates, and securities is the name of the game here. And the following, what I'm going to share is almost complete. <laughs> I left some data out to force people to think about things so they may connect the dots based on their own inner understanding. I will lead you to the water. But I will not, and I cannot give certain details here in the public. It's not going to happen. It's not that I'm purposely withholding. It's just <laughs> people running with stuff can get themselves hurt, and I'm not going to partake in that. If you want detailed specifics, we have an information pack you may obtain. If you go to www.restorethekingdomofgod.blogspot.com, that's our blog, and there's additional information there. And if you go there, be sure to click on each of the three click here buttons for additional information. And after watching this video, you may wish to review our first video, Introduction to S Trusts, Estates, and Securities. It connects back to here. This connects to that. The two kind of go hand in hand here. Again, for your overall inner understanding what's going on here in this world. Um. Anyhow, you may find by doing that, going back and watching that video again after this one, it will help you to your, uh, your understanding. So keep in mind here that there is no substance in the system. There's no man. There's no gold. There's no silver. They removed all of that, remember? That's no longer a consideration. <laughs> it's all exchange of securities, and debt is a consideration, a valuable consideration. Read the Bills of Exchange Act. It's persons slash form only. Nothing living in there at all. If you, haven't, if you haven't noticed, take a look at your food. There's no substance in the food you're buying in these commercial outlets. It's no substance. It's all, <laughs> it's all for persons. It's a, it's a quagmire. I get it. You want to have food with substance. You got to start growing your own stuff and pick the apple off the tree and eat it immediately. That's where the life is. That's what sustains life. And there's no God-given rights of inheritance claimable by persons. 
and it is a person named on that birth certificate and the person named on that birth certificate is a child and a child is a person under the age of 18 years we've talked about this so here we go the identity of the parties there's three of significance for purposes of this video the trustee the surety and the debtor who what are they here and this is based on the reclaim your securities information the trustee is with the obligation to perform the trustee is liable as debtor if you act or appear as a trustee do things that trustees do you will be treated as a trustee and you better perform so even though it's not your name on the documentation if you're there <laughs> you're there as a trustee you might be thinking other things are going on but if you're there you're there as the trustee and this goes back to the birth of the court of, of equity the court of chancery it was a time back when there's no there was no equity there's only common law and it was very rigid there's no flexibility so the equity the court of chancery was brought in to bring balance into the equation the chancery could impose jail time on a trustee to get him to perform and had those who would not perform imprisoned that's how they remedied the situation that is why people have legal problems even to this day fail to perform duties of trustee failed to hold a valid driver's license failed to provide proof of auto insurance failed to obey a law rule command order or regulation fail to file fail to maintain the accounts of good standing and numerous other duties that go with being a trustee i said in previous videos who the law applies to the trustee <laughs> uh, okay that's on to some of the meat here trust number one this is the debtor trust the surety slash guarantor man is the surety but in this system in the public venue estate john paul smith followed by that registration number such as on your birth certificate which is a clone or fictitious fictitious image of man a person is the surety that's the surety in the public it is also the beneficial owner that is why we refer to the estate as the public estate. I'm the private estate here. I'm not in the public. <laughs> and you don't want to go into the public. It, meaning the public estate slash the surety, the John Paul Smith registration number, blah, 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 is visible or recognized in the public system. It appears on the computer screens it exists in wonderland yes sorry the public estate is the surety for the debtor that's what sureties do if you've ever gone out and got a loan you know you're young it's the first time you'll be the principal debtor and your mom or dad would sign as the surety the guarantor on that contract but they always call well i'll get to that you know this is why we say trying to fit man into the system to bring substance into the system is a waste of time. It is also the reason for the proxy under man's control that we've talked about to represent man in the system. Of course, man is in control of this proxy. So that's the debtor trust. <laughs> and you've seen this before. It starts here. The statement of live birth or the certificate of live birth. That's where it starts. So there's your surety, <laughs> the estate. That's what that represents, that document. Remember, your mom was the grantor. Now we move on to trust number two, the beneficiary trust. Now you got to think here just a second here, okay? This is the principal debtor. This is the party to this charged in the public. It'd be credit card charges, provincial offense charges, criminal charges. This is this debtor trust, this principal debtor. That's what's charged in the public. That's what you charge when you're doing business. That's what they charge when they're doing business. And again, man can be a debtor slash trustee. But in this system, in the public venue, John Paul Smith 
SIN or SSN number, blah, 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 1234 or 1233 00, whatever. <clears throat> Again, a clone or fictitious image of man is the principal debtor. It, not man, is visible or recognized in the public system. It appears on the computer screens. It exists in one, it, pardon me, exists in Wonderland. It is the taxpayer. This is to do with taxes. Okay, so just a very quick review here. <laughs> oh, and sorry, and one last thing here with respect to that. This is why we say trying to fit man into the system as a waste of time and can be the basis of setting off on the wrong foot. If you're trying to bring man into the system, wrong foot start right off the bat. So we have the trust number one, it's the debtor trust represented by this. This is the surety. This represents the public estate. I'm not in the system. You won't see me in the system or any man or woman for that matter. Trust number two is the debtor trust, which is the beneficiary, tr pardon me, is the benef trust number two is the beneficiary trust, which is the, which is the principal debtor, which is the John P. Smith with a SSN or SIN number attached to it. So we have trust number one with John Paul Smith registration number. Trust number two, the beneficiary trust is John Paul Smith with an SSN number. And if you look on your documentation, that is the name that's out there that you do business in the public. Why is that? Think about it. Again, you go to the bank to get a loan. Who's going in? You're going in as the principal debtor. And then after that, it's your mom and dad or someone you know, may, would go on the hook as the surety. The surety is stand in debtor, meaning it is not the surety that is charged directly when carrying out business type activity. It is the debtor that is charged. They, we get to the surety through the debtor. The surety is there to guarantee the performance of the principal debtor, the debtor. <laughs> the SIN SSN debtor is a debtor 24-7, 365, and it requires a surety. It's nothing more. The debtor trust number two, the principal debtor, is nothing more than the debtor. It has no more power than the debtor. That's it. <clears throat> and it, re it requires a surety. That's why this is there in the system to back it. <laughs> of course, like I said, we're behind that, but we're not, not in the system. We're there, but we're not there. That's basically uh, your presence more or less is evidenced by this, depending on the circumstances. And if you walk into court, you've already shot yourself in the foot because man does not belong there. And I've said before, we don't appear in court. We appear through our paperwork. I don't care what people want to say. The said debtor is presumed to be the trustee. The state presumes it. The state, the treasury, is the beneficiary. Hence, CRA, Canada Revenue and Internal Revenue Service, enforce the tax laws. I want to talk about the application for the SIN slash SSN. How did my estate become, pardon me, how did my public estate become the surety for the debtor? <laughs> The birth certificate was used to apply for a SSN slash SIN number. That act by you connected your public estate. This birth certificate's an extract of this. This is held over in an office. It's a record. This is not held where people think it's held, but nonetheless, it's, it's more to meet more more here than meets the eye. So you used the birth certificate, a certified extract of this, and made an application for a social insurance or an SSN number, right? We all did it, for everyone I know, including myself. <laughs> so that act, by doing that, connected your public estate to the SS, SIN, SSN, and put your public estate up as surety to underwrite the government bonds, the leveraging of their securities, so you can get a paycheck and other benefits, so-called. I'm not really you, except in your mind. So if you're signing on a tax form claiming this is all my income, although it's not really your income, your intent is that it is. Because remember, you're not in there, <laughs> except in our minds. It's uh, Mind's a powerful thing. So 
So I want to review that again here. It's important for people to understand this. The birth certificate was used to apply for an SSN number or SIN number. That act connected your public estate to the SIN SSN account trust, it's another trust, <laughs> and put your said public estate up as surety to underwrite the government bonds so you can get a paycheck and other benefits, so-called. Behind that, of course, the one doing the work, the issuer of the gilt-edged credit, golden credit, no better. The real backer, the sole contributor is you, the men and the women watching this video. <laughs> but you're also the trustee. <laughs> it's kind of like we got us got ourselves on hook being trustees of our own estates in a roundabout way. That's pretty, pretty twisted, eh? <laughs> ah, and the debtor, which is your trust number two, the SSN, which is debtor 24 seven, that debt debtor transmits debt both ways, both ways. That's all it is. It's purely a debtor, both ways. It is one thing to have a perfected security interest in or control of the surety, the BC trust, the debtor trust. But the debtor account must be addressed as well. The financial part, the, the principal debtor slash trustee, and we have to take care of that as well. <laughs> Debt has flowed out through those SSN, SIN numbers in the form of paychecks and it is accounted for as debt. And that debt must return to source through those same numbers for the cancellation of the debt. A lot of people here on the internet talking about securities are not talking about the debt. The debt's what's got us in bondage. It's the debt that's got us enemies of the state. That debt has got to be taken care of. One way or another, you're responsible for it. It can't be ignored. <sighs> That unredeemed debt, by the way, makes up the public or national debt and, and is held in escrow for you. <laughs> okay, so the debt flows out through the SSN, SIN, it's accounted, and the debt must return through the same channel, come back for, to source for cancellation, or it's not canceled. And you all know that if you watch the movie, The International, the little conversation there with the banker, he said, control the debt, you control the country because they're dealing with countries, but control the debt, you control the debtor. <laughs> like I said before, walks like a duck, quack, quacks like a duck, talks like a duck, you'll be treated as a duck. You want to act like a debtor, you'll be treated as a debtor. You want to act like a trustee, you'll be treated as a trustee. <clears throat> we got to get real here. Last but not least, most people have no idea what they are involved in. People are not aware they assume the role of trustee, let alone how that happened. So in addition, in addition to taking control of the foundational security, the certificate of live birth, which is the public estate, that's a must, is the matter of who the trustee slash debtor is. As of now, you're it. You as the backer and you as the trustee slash debtor which is not good. It's just going around in circles. That must be addressed if one is to correct his or her status. And we use their forms to help us out with that. Not inventing any, uh, reinventing the wheel here. And that's this, all of this information is part of reclaiming your securities. So it's I just want to pause here for a second. Thanks. All right. Had to get a coffee. My head's getting a little bit of dry mouth. <laughs> Still on coffee mode here. It's early. Well, still morning. So it's very important that people understand this or, or, or get a grip on this or, or consider this that this, your John Paul Smith plus registration number, that's the surety. <laughs> there has to be a surety here. Your John P. Smith, whatever's on your SSN or SIN, that's the debtor. Surety is the surety for the debtor. So we call. See if if you if, <clears throat> it's this way to reclaim your securities posts. If 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 I'm the surety for your debtor, then I'm a debtor. <clears throat> debtor surety surety debtor same thing. It's just that there's an order of events. So if the principal debtor doesn't perform, and in this case, be your SSN can't possibly can perform without you and I involved. But if so, if it, anyhow, if it doesn't perform, then that's the reason for the surety. 
like I say, you go to get a loan at a bank at a young age, you got, you know, you don't have any credit uh, worthiness yet, excuse me, <clears throat> playing in that world. And uh, the bank's going to insist on a cosigner, which is just another term for surety or guarantor. So that if the principal debtor, you don't perform, they will call upon your mom and dad to perform uh, to take care of that debt. So it's important for people to understand that distinction. That's not the only trust, but those are the key trusts. Every time you fill out an application, open up an account, you can basically look at that as another trust. But the, the key ones here is the surety and the debtor to understand that. Very important. And um, so like I say, we don't uh, sit here and hand you paperwork and say, you know, we, we've got the templates and stuff for, for you to fill out. See, it's very important here. We're dealing with securities. We're dealing in a, in a system, I said many times, that's you're dealing with experts <laughs> who know these securities. They're, they're highly educated, been at it for a very long time. And people really need to have, in my estimation, I'm basing this on experience, the inner understanding of what they're doing so they can stand on their own two feet again. See people... <laughs> getting directions from others you say well when the judge says this you do that when the judge says this you do that the judge is going to say this when you do this well there's no guarantees any of that's going to happen and when it doesn't happen <laughs> the, the whole uh the whole script thing went out goes out the window and that's the point in time you got to be able to stand on your own two feet and if you haven't done that taking the time to do the homework and research and study to have that understanding they will walk all over you and a 200 dollars traffic fine or a fee for $200 can turn into thousands of dollars can turn into a loss of the house if you think you know what you're doing but you don't so it's with extreme caution <clears throat> I suggest to people that you don't get wrapped up in this other entities or organizations out there are going to do it all for you listen to the talk read you got read the securities transfer legislation read what it says in there it's very clear and very concise Unless that birth certificate is doors to these securities and intermediary, there is no security entitlement. Nothing. So, but anyhow, that's, uh, I think that was all I wanted to chit chat about here today. It's a lovely day. It's a Sunday. We're over here, March 28th, 2021. Um, so yeah, give it a review and like I say, if, if, if you may find it helpful now after, after watching this video to go back and listen to the, uh, or watch the first video, our very first video, Intro to Trusts, Estates, and Securities. All right, just something else I just felt I better add here, and I'm going to do a quick uh, little short screen share here, some blurbage. I'll read it to you. Um, it's in relation to uh, other people on the internet. They're offering securities information, which is great. But if you're going to do that, you gotta have, you got you got to be accurate. Simple as that. So hopefully uh, this shows up in the video, starts off with caution. The securities transfer legislation is very concise. In the context of that act, the birth certificate, BC, must be endorsed to the securities intermediary for there to be a security entitlement. The sheriff, registrar, general, judges, clerks, and others is not the intermediary referred to in that act. The birth certificate is a financial asset in that it is evidence of claim to the interest. So the birth certificate is not the interest, it's claim to the interest. That's in section one, two of the securities transfer legislation. The interest being the financial asset slash security held by the securities intermediary being the foundational security we've talked about. Like the coat check stub being evidence of claim to your jacket your interest, <clears throat> excuse me, you will not get your jacket returned. You will not get performance if you not return the stub, the birth certificate to the holder of your jacket slash security, which for purposes of this is the securities intermediary holding the financial asset, the interest, <clears throat> the as in one office, the sheriff, registrar general, judge clerk, it's not it, it's not it. It's make-believe stuff. The person named on the birth certificate becomes the entitlement holder once the birth certificate is endorsed properly to the securities intermediary. And I would not claim to be that person. We've already done that to ourselves. And I certainly would not claim to hold the, 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 the birth certificate slash financial asset directly. 
going to read you something here. Now, this is from the Securities Transact, Ontario. You'll find the same in UCC Article 8. It's all the same in all the securities legislation, transfer legislation. Holding financial asset directly. A person is to be treated as holding a financial asset directly rather than as having a security entitlement with respect to the financial asset, if, the, if a securities intermediary holds the financial asset for that person, that's the document, that's it, for that person and the financial asset is registered in the name of or payable to the order of or specially endorsed to that person and has not been endorsed to the securities intermediary or in blank. Got that? So it's telling you right here in black and white. <laughs> the color dude if you want. Unless that until that certificate, that's the birth certificate that evidences the claim to the interest is endorsed to the securities intermediary, there is no security entitlement. There's nothing. Nothing has changed. And again, it's the person named on the birth certificate that once this is done, becomes the entitlement holder, and yet, but you don't want to be that person. It's a person, remember? <laughs> Men, women. So this is why we, this is the reason for bringing in the proxy now, because man cannot step into there just to, to, to basically to secure um, <clears throat> in the entitlement, the securities entitlement. <laughs> so in other words, man can't go in there saying, uh, this is me, I'm the, and I'm, I'm the person named on the birth certificate, I'm the entitlement holder. <laughs> no, you're not. At that point, you're you're just basically debtor trustee. There is no securities entitlement. It's clear as day here in black and white. So claiming to be holding the financial asset directly is basically saying there's no securities entitlement. And there's no securities entitlement. There's no obligation for the securities intermediary to perform. And the securities intermediary has no duty, as per the legislation, to bar the claims against that account. So there's more to this people than meets the eye. And uh, it's important, as I say, to do the homework, to do the reading, to do the studying, and to have this internalized so that when you do what you do and <clears throat> you run out of resistance or a test, and I would certainly be prepared to be tested. Stop the screen share here. So if things go sideways or you're being tested, you know what to do, you know how to respond picking up the phone and saying this, calling someone else saying like, okay, I did what you said, but they wouldn't accept my paperwork. I, one of these videos I was watching yesterday, the guy was talking about, well, he couldn't get the, the court or somebody to the clerk or somebody to accept the paperwork or the sheriff or something or other. <laughs> so now he's going back to the teach his teacher's guide there to say, well, now what do I do? <laughs> it's just going to turn into a, a, a quagmire and a nightmare for everyone, including the, 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 the people helping them out, they're going to take on a lot of huge burdens there. God bless them. And on that note, I'm done here. I bid you adieu. I love you. Thank you for listening to me and putting up with me. And again, if you're interested, uh, go to restorethekingdomofgod.blogspot.com for additional information and be sure to click on each of those three click here buttons. Thank you so much. Love you. God bless and enjoy this day. Thank you.